right here, oh God, right here today, in this moment, oh God, in this very moment, God, we come against all distractions, oh God, all distractions, all the tricks of the enemy, all, all things, oh God, we just come against it right now. I, we just want our minds on you today, oh God. That's all we want. Our minds all on you, oh God. It's all about you. It's all about It's all about you. Come on, give God some praise today. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. We thank you, Lord. So we're just going to continue in that mode of thanksgiving today. We're just going to continue in that mode of praise today. We're just going to continue right there. Hallelujah. Come on, you at home today worshiping with us. We came to worship the Lord today. Is that all right? Come on, put your hands together like this. I'm going to use the song. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Yeah, I will wait. I will trust in you. Yes, I will. I will trust in you. Come on, everybody say it. The Lord is. The Lord is my life. Yes, he is. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? Yeah. Who shall I be afraid? The Lord. Who shall I be? Who shall I be? I will wait. I will wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I will wait on you. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will trust. I'm trust in you. I'm going to trust in you. I will trust in you. Come on, I love this next verse right here. It just simply says, I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, everybody sing. The Lord is. The Lord is my life. Yes, you are. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Yeah. Oh, no. 
the goodness of the Lord. Come on, help me sing that today. I will remain confident in this. I will see Come on, it's the one thing to sing it. goodness of the it's Lord. It's one thing to sing it, but do you really believe that today? Come on, sing it. I will remain yeah. confident in this. I will see do you really believe the that goodness of the Lord.
not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you Lord my life is not my own To you I belong I give myself I give myself to you Come help me sing that Sing my life Life is not my own To you I belong To you I belong Heavenly Father we give I give myself we give. I give myself to you Lord our life is not our own My life is not my own To you I belong To you I belong Lord we give ourselves I give myself we pray. I give myself to you in my life, my life is not my own. To you, I belong. To you, I belong. Lord, I give myself. I give myself. I give oh, myself to you. Make that your heart's cry. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. Come on, make that your prayer today. To you, make that your prayer today. Lord, I give myself. I give myself. I give myself, I give myself to you. Come on, let's sing that one more time. In my life, my life is not my own. To you, I to you I belong. Lord, I give myself, I give myself, I give, I give myself to you. Say my life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you, I belong. To you, I belong. Lord, I give myself, I give myself, I give, I give myself to you. I give myself
sing home my own my all I give to you there's nothing else Lord there's nothing else I'd rather do I promise you oh Lord I promise you
for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Where would we be? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for this time in your presence. This time that we stand before you with lifted hearts, lifted hands, with our ears inclined to hear what you have to say. Lord, let no flesh glory in your presence, but have your total, complete way in this place today. Thank you for allowing us to enter your presence. Thank you so much for allowing us to wake up this morning with a mind to come before you and to gather with our brothers and our sisters to hear what you have to say, to be able to praise and worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you so much, Lord God. We do not take it for granted. We do not take it for granted that we, bro we woke up this morning breathing. We do not take it for granted that we woke up this morning able to stand and to walk. We do not take it for granted that we can talk, that we can hear, that we can see. We do not take it for granted that we have a tongue to praise you with. So with that tongue, we praise you right now. Give the Lord praise. With that tongue, with the fruit of our lips, we give you glory. With the fruit of our lips, we give you praise. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Glory and honor. Praises. Hallelujah. Glory to your majesty, Lord God. Your strength and your power, Lord God. Glory be to you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 O oh matchless King. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 We give ourselves away right now, Lord God. Our thoughts last week, yesterday, this morning, we give it all away. To stand in your presence this morning, awaiting your instructions. Glory to your name, Father. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord God. We give you glory. Amen. And amen. Thank you all. Glory to God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Oh, thank you all for coming out today. For all you that are joining us online, we bless you. Um, we thank you for coming in the room with us. Um, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hmm. We welcome everyone here. We welcome you in, in the back of the day, you say TV land, We're in internet land, in Wi-Fi land, we welcome you. Um, we're going to move real quick. Um, we're going to praise God and worship God in our giving. Um, uh, the ushers are going to come and with the envelopes. And as, you, as you're sitting on your screen, you should see some information and giving 
going across your screen on the bottom. Uh, we do bless you and thank you for your giving, for your dedication in your giving, your consistency in giving to this ministry, giving to the work of the Lord. Because without your giving, we can't move along the kingdom of God. Amen. And uh, amen. Amen. So we do bless you and thank you for that. Thank you for all that you have given to thus far. Um, trust me and believe me that is going towards the good work. Father, we thank you for those that are giving, those that have given and the things that they have sown into your ministry. We thank you, Lord God, that you will bless them in whatever way they need it the most, Lord God, whether it be financially, with food, clothing, whatever they need it, Lord God, you bless them with it. We thank you for their willingness and their consistency in their giving. And thank you for covering their lives and their families and, and protecting them without, when they go and when they come in. We thank you for even overflowing, Lord God, the things that they need that may overflow in every area of their lives. We thank you for rent being paid, mortgages being paid, car payment being paid, utilities being paid, that your giving does not bring stress and it does not bring confusion. But we give, Lord God, because you've given to us. And we thank you so much, Lord God, for the opportunity to give and the opportunity to work. We bless you and we give you praise. In glory Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We do thank you all again for being here this morning. Um, we do send our prayers towards um, our pastors, Pastor Kenneth and Pastor Helena. Y'all give a good wave and a good shout out to Pastor Kenneth and Pastor Helena. We keep them covered in prayer. Um, we thank you, Lord God. I, I, well, I thank you, Father, for my wife. And, um, of, in a couple of weeks, it'll be 30, but well, next week it'll be 31 years of being married. I do thank you, Lord God, for keeping my, uh, us together, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Y'all ain't clapping good enough for me. That's all right, I'm gonna celebrate on my own. Um, as I should. So we do, we do bless God. Um, now don't forget, you online, if you wanna join us after the service is over for Met Connect, to join us in our Zoom room, you can, you can uh, dial, dial in at 850-539-1110. Someone will be there to join you and they will um, assist you in whatever questions you may have if you wanna pray for prayer or um, just to have a conversation about what you've learned today. Um, please feel free to join us, amen. Forgotten all, all, all out of the way? Okay, let's go, y'all ready? All right, now um, I'm gonna just, can I, I'm just gonna, gonna flow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I was instructed to do. I'm gonna put on my pastoral robe. And the, because there's some things that I, I, I think that we're missing in these times that we're in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to you as a pastor. A shepherd, someone who's, who's leading, leading a flock. Not the, but a, okay? Um, there are a lot of things that have gone on these past two and a half years. Amen? Amen? And we've had ups and downs. It's been a roller coaster ride. Roller coaster ride of emotions of should we, should we, or should we not? Do we or do we not? Um, if we do, what should we do? And, and how do we do it? And all these other kind of things. And, and it, it's even gotten to the point where some, sometimes even the church has been split over it. And when you know the church is being split over it, ain't something wrong. We, we, don't, we don't really understand and we don't really know what we should do or what we sh shouldn't do. And, and, but we're still preaching and, and teaching and we're telling people to believe God and we're telling people not to fear, but we're in fear. Because we, 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 we seem like we just don't know what to do. But it's not happened before. Or we act like it's not happened before. 
if you go through the scriptures, there's always been these times of chaos um, where, where things have happened out of nowhere and there's been distress and the enemy has tried to take God's people out. So there's not, not anything new with things happening on the earth where we have pestilence, we have wars, we have rumors of wars and we see all these other things that are happening and, and Jesus said one thing. Can anybody tell me what Jesus said? He said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Say that. Don't be afraid. All y'all not saying it. Don't be afraid. There are times when things will come on this earth and things have come on this earth. Some of it is not by the hand of God. You know when it's the hand of God. And you know when it's the enemy. But sometimes we act like we don't know who our enemy is. And how he's come to make to distract us and, and, and divide and, and tear us apart. You look, look at all of our, our young black men being slaughtered in the street whether by their own hand or by police officers or whatever it may be, we see homes, our, our families being destroyd and being divided where there's just single, single family households and uh, children growing up without fathers and some, some instead some have grown up without mothers. And, but the, the, the most important thing is they're growing up without fathers and they don't have that man in the house to, to give the instructions and to lead and to guide and to do what, do what God had purpose for them to do. So we're a little unbalanced. We're a little off, off balance. We're a little bit of shaken up a little bit. Not only in our society, but also in the church. And sometimes it's like we just don't know what to do. Why don't we know what to do? Um, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Let's start there. And read with me. For everything there is a season and a time for every activity, right? A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to collect stones, to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to... A time to search and a time to quit searching. Wow. Wow. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Now, you go through the, all those eight verses and you can tell me which one of those verses that you do not find happening right now. Because what we don't understand is that in each season, there is a time, God has a time clock on each season. And within those, that season and within that time, there are certain things that need to be going on. There are certain things that are happening. Some you may not agree with. Some you may agree with. We, we prefer to agree with the, the things that we agree with than, than rather than agree with the things that we don't agree with. If you understood that, let me know. Yeah. Amen? Okay, so we spend more time work, um, celebrating the things that we want to celebrate. But we forget, we celebrate birth, but we're horrified about death. We celebrate peace, but we're hard about, horrified about war. There are things that we don't like 
and things that we like. We try to pick and choose what we won't agree with and what we don't. But within every season, there is a time for everything. Now you tell me, you sit there and you think for a minute. Within every season that you have been through, you have, you have gone through each one of these things. There have been war times. There have been peace times. There have been births. There have been deaths. There have been planting. There have been harvesting. There have been tears. There have been grief. There have been laughter. There have been dancing. All these things happen in that season because there's a time, a purpose for everything that happens. We cannot afford to quit in the middle of a season. No matter what happens within that season, there's a time for everything. It'll come and it'll go. You just have to wait it out. But we spend so much time distressing over the bad stuff till we can't see when the good stuff is happening. Because if, if you are in any kind of a farmer or, or gardener or anything like that, you know that there is a time to plant, and there's a time to harvest, but there's a time when things just die. Because some plants don't live good in other seasons. So you have to take advantage of that time in that season that those plants are, are, are producing fruit. Amen? So tell me this, how much fruit have you produced in your season that you are in right now that you have let drop to the ground because you've been focusing so much on the bad stuff? Because we cannot go into our next until we deal with right now. And we're so busy, we're still grieving over the past so we can't focus on planting right now but we're still looking for fruit for things that we haven't planted because we're afraid of the past. I talk to people every single day and they're, they're constantly telling me about um, Pastor, this is, this is the way I, I was brought up, this is the way, this is what went wrong. Um, and now I have no family. My, my, my wife left me. My children left me. She won't let me have anything to do with my children. My family doesn't want me to come stay with them, so I'm on the street. I'm living on the street, been living on the street for 15, 20 years. And I don't want to be like this, but I have nobody to go to. Because there's one indiscretion. I am where I am. And you try to give them, give them encouragement, but it seems like they've been there so long, they can't see a light at the end of the tunnel. And then when the light does hit them bright, they're still looking back at what is and what was. And they can't see, the, see, see that right now, you just take that one step, that one step and you're out. And, but the thing about it is, is happening in the body of Christ now. Where sometimes the world doesn't even know what we believe. They don't know whether we trust God or not. And if you look at it, everything that happens on this planet, everything that happens, people are constantly looking to hear what the church has to say. Whether you believe it or not, they are constantly watching. What's the church going to say about this? What are they going to do about this? What is their God going to do? Is their God going to show up? It's the same thing that happened to the children of Israel. We learned about it in, 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 in uh, Sunday school this morning. We heard about your God, but we haven't seen him face to face yet. And a lot of times in our lives, you've got people who are working around us and they live with us and, 
and they, they go to school with us and they never know your God. They've only heard him from a distance. And they're shocked if you invite them to church and they see you raising your hands. They see you praising God as loud as, but they hear something else outside. There are things now in this season that God has need of you. And he needs for you to understand your process. Because within this season and within this time that we are in, you have to stick to the process. My sister Dottie, she said it this morning, and I had it in my notes, and she said it, and I told her to shut up this morning. Because our life is a process. Everything that we do from the day we were born to the day we go to sleep is a process. And we'll know in that process how much you trusted God at the end of it. But you have to be faithful to the process. Are you all with me? Genesis, I, I know guys, I, I did not give you all the scriptures, but they just kept coming this morning. I, I kept writing them down, so uh, you don't have to get them. Uh, Genesis 8, the 22nd verse it says, as long as the earth remains, there is planting, seed time, harvest, old, cold, and heat, summer and winter, day and night. As long as the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, there's going to be things that are going to be happening every single season. What are you trusting God to do in those seasons? And can God trust you with what he has put in your, in your heart and in your mind and in your hands to accomplish? What happened last season is not good enough for this season. But you have to understand what season you're in. If you're coming out of summer, you know you can't walk into winter with no shorts on. And if you're coming out of winter, you can't walk into spring with an overcoat on, boots on, a hood on, and gloves on. It's different equipment. Now, over the past year, and I, I took out my little book, my book of notes, and I opened it and all this anointing start falling out of it because... Uh, I just went over everything that, have, that, that, that the elders, the pastors have said over the past year. Fascinating stuff. Because pastors started out this year with, anybody? I'm an overcomer and I'm overcoming every day. Right? Yes? I'm an overcomer and over, overcoming every day. But we forgot. Then uh, Ella Turner, wow, she broke out the, the uh, beginning of the year with a message of hope going into the new year. And then Ella Sandra, why God? Because we ask God why sometimes, don't we, when stuff happens. And then uh, my lovely wife, are you sure? She asked, are you sure? And then Elder Keith, if. Mm. And then this, this other guy, Pastor Ward, seasons change. Knowing the times. Um, Pastor Kenneth, the responsibility of dominion, of the faith. 
Pastor uh, Elder Moore, growing in grace. I am who I am because of God's grace. Elder Celeste, becoming your authentic self. Pastor Kenneth, strength in the blood. The power of the blood. By the power of the blood. Understanding your mindsets. God is for us. Purpose. Fighting through your frustration in following and living out your purpose. That's Elder Moore. My wife again, are you sure? From a mother's, from, a, from the heart of a mother. Ella Turner, count it all joy. Ella Sandra, kingdom authority. Ella Key, stand. Elder Moore, preach the word, preach the gospel. In Joshua's generation, who is ready to step up? Half, half, first half of this year, we've been preparing you, preparing the body of Christ to go to move into this second half of the year. Preparing you to suit up. To take on the whole armor of God. Because there are things that are going to happen, things that have been happening, but things that are going to happen that can, that you'll be able to stand within these, these last and evil days, as the old folk used to say. If you have incli been inclining your ear to what has been, or the instructions that have been given week after week after week, when it has not become just common, when it has to become familiar. What are we going to do in our lives right now, the second part of this year? Because we keep making promises, we keep saying stuff, we're going to lose weight, we're going to do this, we're going to do, I'm going to be a better Christian, I'm going to be a better father, I'm going to be a better husband, I'm going to be a better mother, I'm going to be a better wife, I'm going to be a better child, I'm going to be a better son, I'm going to be a better daughter, I'm going to be a better uh, uh, sibling, sister, brother, I'm going to be a better co-worker, I'm going to be a better boss, I'm going to be a better praise and worship leader, I'm going to be a better musician, I'm going to be a better, whatever it may be that you say that you're going to be better at, you cannot do it without the Spirit of God. You can't do it by your own hand. And that's where we have been going on. We've been trying to do things by our own hand. And we, we, we've been trying to set aside the Holy Spirit. I'll, I'll, I'll pick you up when it gets too hard. But he needs to be there constantly at all times. There needs to be a constant, a constant moving, a constant repetition, a constant rhythm, rhythm a rhythm about our lives, a rhythm about what we do. Understanding God's word, reading God's word, understanding God's word, reading what God's word, asking questions about God's word, listening for God's voice, practicing the presence of God in our own personal times, understanding and praising God in our own personal times, learning that relationship and building that relationship with God in our own personal times, our own personal times. What we do in our own personal times will reflect our authority in, in, in the out in the out world, in the world out there. Then nobody can question who you are in Christ because of what you have been doing in your own personal time. Because if we if we continue to do on the track that we're on. Because there are many churches that have, have shut down over, these, over this past two years. Things have happened. People have jumped ship. They've gone to, to online 
teachers and preachers and everything like that. And we don't, we're, we're not fellowshipping anymore because we say now we, we don't understand. We keep quoting scriptures that we really don't understand. And we say, well, well this is not the church, but, but we're the church. We're the church. But we, we, we don't understand that we're, we're the whole body. The whole body is the church, and we're fitly joined together, and we have to help and, and, and help one another and, and, and encourage one another and be together in one another in one place. But if we keep separating ourselves and keep dividing ourselves and keep, keep trying to come on, well, I don't know if I, can, if I want to be here anymore and do this anymore because you're trusting in a man to get you where you need to go instead of trusting the Holy Spirit. You, you're coming on, on Sunday. You only come one time. You're coming on Sunday. Coming on, guys, in, in, out there in TV land, you come on Sunday and nobody else sees you anymore. And the Bible tells us as that we see the day approaching that we come more together. We come together even more because we're, it's a place of safety. It's a place of enc encouragement. Yes, I can see you on Zoom, but I would love to see you in face to face so I can see, hear the tonation of your voice. And I can see your face. I can touch you. Because right now what the enemy has done, he has separated us so much. So we don't really not even have any discernment to when we're sick and when we're hurting when we're in pain, when we're grieving. We don't know because we're out of place. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, please. It is not up to me to make sure that you're fed every single day. But it is up to me that when I do see you, that I can check you and make sure that you're okay. And we can't, we gotta stop this stuff. We, we, we're expecting the pastors, we're expecting the leaders, we're expecting the elders and the leaders and everybody else to read our minds. Well, you're supposed to have the Holy Spirit, well, you're supposed to call somebody too. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. To gave to what? Gave to who? Church. To who? Church. These are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his... Y'all ain't saying it loud enough. To do his... So whose responsibility is that? Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work. That's my responsibility, to equip you to do God's work and to build up the, build up the, build up the, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Not my standard. Whose standard? Okay. Whose standard? The standard of Christ. Okay. Then we will no longer be immature like children, be, we won't be tossed and blown, blown about with every wind of new teachings. That's what it said, right? We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies who so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love Growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of, the, of his body, the, the, 
he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own each part does its own each part does its own that means that each one of us has our own special work that we're supposed to be doing in the church in the body of Christ together so if we are absent from the body if we are asleep that's a different thing because we're waiting to be resurrected but if we are absent from the body something is not functioning well it helps to it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is what healthy, healthy. The whole body is healthy and growing in love. So, as a pastor, as a shepherd, if I am, God has called me to lead a flock, and I begin to start seeing different sheep begin to disappear, what is my responsibility? I can't hear you. What's, what's that? Because Jesus said he'll leave the 99 to go get the what? Okay. And if I am a pastor, a shepherd, a leader of a flock, and I begin to see different things happening within my flock, what is my responsibility? To take care of that flock to see after that flock, to see if that flock is damaged, if there's something going on with that flock, if there's something going on with that sheep, if there's something happening that should not be happening. Is there a wolf among us? Is there something that's happening that should not be happening among us? That's causing division, that's causing separation, that's causing um, all different types of, of, of things happening that should not be happening. This is what is happening in the body of Christ today. We have gotten so used to the spectacular and the, and the jumping and the hopping to when it's time to come for sound doctrine, we do not know what to do with it. God is holding each one of us responsible for what he has called us to do. Because if God has called any of us anywhere at any time, and we say that God has called us anywhere, anywhere, any place at any time, and then when it does not fit your, with your protocol, when it does not fit with your idea of what it should be, and if you leave and you say, well, God, then you're saying that God changed his mind, and then you make God a liar because you said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Bible says that judgment begins with the house of God. Everything starts here because we are his representatives. And God does not want his, the, his people to make him seem like he's bipolar. Like he's schizophrenic. Like he can't make up his mind what he wants to do. We are God's representatives. Only you can decide how well are you representing the kingdom of God. That means that each one of us has to stand in the mirror every single day and ask ourselves, am I representing the kingdom of God well? When I come home, have I represented the kingdom of God well today? With my employees, with my, my co-workers, with my fellow students, with my, with, my, with, any, any, with my wife, with my husband, with my children, with my parents. Have I represented the Spirit of God and the Kingdom of God well? Have you given yourself away? So he can use you. 
we sing pretty songs. But do you really believe what you're singing? Because if you don't believe what you're singing, it's just another song. To give you some chills and some, some thrills in that particular moment. People of God, now is the time to, to be sure of your calling. To be sure of what God has taught you or what he's given you, what he's put into your hands. If you, if you know that God has called you to a specific place, a specific time, don't you move because you're frustrated. Don't you move because things don't seem like they're right. Because some of you God has called to be pastors. Some of you God has called to be apostles. Some of you God has called to be prophets and teachers and, 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 and evangelists. And if you move because of what you, what you feel like a frustration, it's going to alter your course of your life and the people that God has set in line for you to talk to, for you, for you to be around, for you to get your, the message to, for get the kingdom to, because it may not be behind these, this desk. It may be in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the courtroom. It may be in the household. It may be in the school. Wherever you may be, that's where your pastor it is. That's where your prophetic guests live. That's where the that's where it all is. But are you willing, really, really willing, to give it all? I mean, everything to God. Are you willing to really lay it on the line today? Are you really, really? To give, your, to give yourself away. Stand to your feet, please. I'm not, I'm not talking about saying yes because, you know, this is what you should do. I'm saying say yes because you know that you have been called higher higher than what you think you should be called not higher as far as positions out here but higher in a level of God that you understand that this relationship I can't do anything without this relationship I can't do anything without God I can't move without God I can't be without God I can't breathe without God I don't know if I have said anything to anybody that's been listening online. I know it's, some people will call it a sober message. I don't know. But we can't continue to go on week after week, day after day, month after month, living like this. As if God, as we, we don't know who our God is. So if you have not given your whole life to God, if you have not, as the song said, I give myself away, if you have, you have not given yourself away, this is a good time to do it. And maybe you have not totally given yourself away as a believer. You put your foot in and you take your foot out. You put your foot in and you take your foot out. Y'all know the rest of it. It's, it's time to stop dancing with God. It's time to stop tap dancing. It's time to stop doing all this other stuff. It's time to really be real now. Because this, this second part of this year... If you, you thought the first part of this year was bad. We've been trying to get you to put your whole armor on. Your righteousness, truth, peace. The sword of the spirit. The shield of faith. We've been trying to get you to put your, all that on so you can stand against the wild of the enemy. 
You have to be sure today. You have to be sure. So just pray after me. Father God, I thank you so much for who you are. Lord, today, yesterday's gone. Today, I give you all, all of me. I open every door, every closet, every window. You have total access to me. Total access to me. Father, I can't live without you. Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I may walk out your life in this bodily form. Thank you for receiving me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you've prayed that prayer online, and if you want to talk to somebody, go to our Met Connect Zoom room, 850-539-1110. Someone will be there to answer whatever questions that you may have from the message today. Whatever, if, you, if, you, if you've prayed that prayer when you're in here, and maybe you have not given God everything, make that decision right now. I give you my life, my mouth, my ears, my tongue, everything that, that's about me, I give totally to you. No questions asked. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our online worship service. We hope you were blessed by this time of worship and today's message. We invite you to continue your worship in giving. Giving online is simple. Please follow the instructions on the screen for our Give Now link or simply give via our Cash App link. You may also give by visiting our website at www.metrocathedraloftruth.com and click on the Donations tab. Again, thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray that you are encouraged, strengthened, and empowered. We hope you will join us again next Sunday. Until then, be blessed.